sketched below is the graph of f, which is an exponential graph we can see. Um, the point 416 lies on f. Determine the value of k. That's very easy. Because we have a point, we can just substitute it in. So we know that y is equal to k to the x. So we can now fill in y is 16 and um, x is 4. Here we can take the fourth root on both sides. And so on this side we have k. The fourth root of 16 is technically positive and negative 2 because this is a even value. Uh, you're going to have positive and negative answers. However, they told us that k is bigger than 0. So k can't be negative, so therefore k must be 2. Graph G is obtained when you reflect graph F along the line y equals to x, which is this line over here, which is actually the inverse line. That's what inverses are. They are reflections across the line y equal to x. So you need to just understand when they say reflecting a graph along that line, that means inverse. Determine the new equation. So now we're just going to go do an inverse type of thing. So we know that k is now 2. Now we know that with inverses, we switch x and y, and then we get y alone. So the base is 2, so we keep the base as 2. We know that the inverse of an exponential is a log, and so there we go. This next question says, sketch the graph of g. Okay, so graph g is obtained by reflecting. Okay, so graph g is this um, log graph that we just found. Indicate on your graph the coordinates of two points. Okay. Very easy, because what we must realize, yes, you can go draw a log graph if you want, but we already have the original graph, okay? And we know that when you take an inverse, the x's and y's switch around. So, if we take the coordinates 4 and 16 and you switch those around, well, then that just becomes 16 and 4. And then if you take this coordinate, which is 0 for x, 1 for y, you switch that around, it becomes that. So we can just go plot those points now. But also, remember that an, um, an exponential graph, which is this one over here, has an asymptote. If you can't see the asymptote, then it's because it is on the x-axis itself. So that is your asymptote y equals to 0. So if you now flip that around, then that becomes x equals to 0, which is actually a vertical line that goes this way now. Okay. And so let's go plot these coordinates. So 16 and 4 would be somewhere way off to the right over here, so maybe over there. Well, it's actually going to be there, because we know that our inverse is a reflection across this y equals x line. So it'll probably be somewhere there, 16 and 4. And then 1, 0 would be here at yeah, 1, 0, and then you just connect them. And there we go. Use your graph to determine the values for which this. Okay, now these are one of those questions where usually they put a little dot over here or over there, um, but it's that same kind of question where we make a table. So if we then take, so what we normally do is we take f of x and we take g of x and we want to multiply them so that the answer is bigger than zero. That means positive. How do you make a positive when you multiply two things? Well, let's just quickly write here. Well, if this one's a positive and this one's a positive, then that will be a positive. And if this one's negative and this one's negative, then that will still be positive. So now what I like to then do is I call this situation one. Let's lower this one down a bit. And then that'll be situation number two. So let's start with number one. So we want to go find places where f of x is positive. So f of x, positive. So f of x being positive means above the x-axis. Well, it's, it's positive. It's above the x-axis everywhere. Okay, so then we immediately know that this one's never going to work because f of x is never negative. Remember, negative means below the x-axis, positive means above the x-axis. Now, in that place where f of x is positive, which is everywhere, is there a place where this one is positive as well, where it's above the x-axis? Well, yes, that would be here because there it's above the x-axis. So the answer then is going to be from... Well, it's, it's the overlap part, so it's this whole area here. So we always give our x values when giving the answer. So it's from this point, which is x equals to 1, all the way to infinity. Now, they haven't included 0, so we'll just say um, x greater than 1. If you want to use interval notation, you could say x is an element going from 1 to infinity.
This next question says, where is g of x, which is the log graph, this one over here, where is that smaller than minus one? So that's a y value of minus one. So a y value of minus one is probably somewhere over here. Okay, so they wanna know where is it smaller than that? So where is it under that? So that would be this area here, okay? Now the thing is, we don't know the x value where that starts. We don't know this x value. So what we do is we take the equation of that graph and we say to that equation, we know that at this point, we know the y value is minus one. We know the y value is minus one, but we don't know what the x value is. Now we just reverse log to try get x. So we know that x will be equal to the base to the power of this, and that'll actually just give us a half. So that means that this x value over here is a half, and we know the y value is minus one. So if I just redraw this log graph, we know that it actually goes through that point, like we said, through there, but then it hugs the asymptote. It goes very close to this asymptote. So our answer that we're looking for now is this piece over here, but we're using x values. Sorry, now it's there. So our answer is inside here. So what we'll say is that um, x is an element going from the asymptote, which you never include, you never include an asymptote, up to um, a half, which I will include because they have included, okay? Now, if you use set builder notation, you could say x is bigger than zero, but smaller than or equal to a half. This question says, if h is equal to f with a minus x in it. Okay, so that means that if f of x is uh, two to the x, then h of x, sorry, h of x, which they said is f of minus x, then you're just gonna plug a minus into the place of x. There we go, so that's the equation of h. Now this can be written in different ways if you wanted to. It says calculate the value of x for which this minus this is this. Okay, well, let's just go turn that into an equation. So um, we could say f of x is equation minus h of x, and we'll make that equal to 15 over four. So we have two to the x minus two to the minus x. Okay, now what I would do here is I would take that down to the bottom, so it'll be one over, and then it becomes a positive. And then here you can use k method actually. Um, there are other ways we can do this. Um, but let's go with k method. So we could say k is equal to two to the x. The other way would have been to get a common denominator, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, but then you probably would have switched over to k method anyways. So if k is equal to two to the x, then um, this is gonna be k minus one over k equals to 15 over four. Now we need to get a common denominator, which would be four k. So that means this needs to be multiplied by four k, top and bottom. This one needs to be multiplied by four, and this one needs a k, top and bottom. And so here we end up with four k squared minus four equals to 15 k. We don't need the denominators anymore because in maths, when you have an equation and the denominators are the same, then you no longer need uh, those denominators. Now it's just an easy case of solving this quadratic. I'm just gonna use the quadratic formula Obviously in an exam, you would write out the formula, fill in the values, um, but just to save us time, I'm gonna quickly just go calculate everything on my calculator. And so what you must find is that k is four or k is negative a quarter. Okay, now that's not the answer because they don't want k, they want x. So we know that we've got this now. So let's go do the first one. So if k is four, then we're gonna end up with, um, what did we say? Oh, we said k was two to the x, yeah. Shouldn't have erased that. Okay, so then we can say two to the x equals to four. Uh, two to the x is equal to two to the two, and so therefore x is two. Okay, now if k is um, minus a quarter, which is this one now, then we say two to the x is equal to minus a quarter, but now this will have no solution. You can't, um, this expression here is an exponential graph, which is this one over here. 
And we said that that thing is always positive. It can't be a negative. There is no value for X that you could plug in here. You could, if you're in grade 12, well, everyone watching this is in grade 12 because it's a grade 12 kind of question. Um, even if you tried to use logs here, you're going to get an error. So this is just going to be a no solution. So then the only answer would be X is 2.